Most underground sewer and drainage pipes are made of reinforced dry mix concrete. Reinforced refers to the fact the concrete has steel bars inside it for added structural strength. Dry mix refers to the type of concrete. You can mold it, then immediately extract it, and it holds its shape. Concrete pipes can be as small as 25 centimeters or as large as three and a half meters. It has a hundred year lifespan. Dry mix concrete is made of stone, coarse sand, Portland cement, which is a finely ground blend of clay and limestone, water, and a chemical that acts as a water reducer. Trucks unload the sand and stone into outdoor storage bins. The materials automatically drop onto a conveyor belt, which transports them to storage silos above the factory floor. The cement arrives by cement tanker, which blows it into a silo. All the silos feed the mixer. As the ingredients blend, the cement and water combine to form a paste that coats the sand and stone. The water reducer enables them to use minimal water. The less water, the stronger and more durable the concrete. Meanwhile, workers use a special machine to build what's called the cage, a circular steel frame that will form the pipe's internal structure, its backbone. They insert two and a half meter long steel rods in a circular configuration, pushing each rod partway through the machine to the other side. There, an automated spot welder fuses a steel cable to one rod. Then the machine begins turning, winding the cable tightly around the rods. Here, a worker is turning the machine manually just to show us the process in slow motion. This is what it looks like at the normal automated speed. As the rods pass through the machine, the welder fuses the cable to them in one continuous spiral. As the spiraled cable reaches the end of the rods, the machine's claws spread outward, forming a wider section on the end. This is called the bell section. Workers position it on a base ring designed to hold the cage in place. Then they close a hinged steel mold over it. Now they're ready to pour the concrete. A forklift transports the mold to a machine called the packer head. They position the mold directly under it. A long drill-like screw descends into the mold. As concrete pours in, the screw turns at high speed, moving up and down. Its blades propel the concrete outward against the mold walls, forming the pipe. This process is called centrifugal projection forming. The process for making large diameter pipes is slightly different. A welder fuses spacers to the cage, both inside and out. These will center the cage inside the mold. Workers position the cage onto a base ring, then lower the outer part of the mold, called the outside form, over it. After securing it to the ring, they lower the unit over the smaller inner part of the mold, called the inside form. An overhead funnel pours concrete into the cavity between the two mold forms. Powerful electrical vibrators shake the mold. This forces the thick concrete downward, filling the cavity. This process is called vibration forming. With either pipe forming technique, the molded concrete is quite fragile. So the molds go off to the curing warehouse to harden. There, workers remove them, leaving the pipe standing upright. Steam hoses transform the curing warehouse into a sauna. The temperature rises to 60 degrees Celsius, the relative humidity 100%. The concrete hardens in about 12 hours. Concrete pipes buried underground have to be able to withstand the weight of the earth above them. So the company subjects sample pipes to extreme pressure to test their maximum resistance. Concrete pipes join together with watertight rubber gaskets. 